Hello everybody, welcome to State 48 Turtle and Tortoise. I am Hayden, appreciate you guys stopping by. Bringing you another video today, try and bring you guys a little bit more education. Um, but first I'm gonna show you, tortoises are loving it today. We had, uh, well it's a bright and sunny winter day, but we actually just had rain this morning. It's supposed to have some rain this, uh, pretty much this whole weekend. So um, yeah, but all the tortoises are out and about loving life. Today, well, first and foremost, before we get started today, what I need you guys to do, click the subscribe button down below, somewhere on one of the sides. If you guys could click the subscribe button for me, like this video, because it definitely helps me grow. By the way, guys, we just passed 200 subscribers. I mean, we're on the next level now, 200 subscribers. So, I mean, we're getting there. Pretty soon it'll be a million. So, just throwing that out there, but thank you guys. Couldn't do it without you guys supporting, clicking the like button, commenting and everything. So thank you so, so much. Um, the pond is doing excellent. Being so warm today. That goldfish is bigger than the albino freaking red eared slider. Um, I've seen the red eared sliders out here all basking on here. They're, they're super scared of me. I mean, hopefully that changes someday, but. Um, sorry, my neighbor's dog is barking. He doesn't like me. Anywho, um, they've all been up here basking today, so that's awesome. Okay, sorry about that. Um, my neighbor came outside, grabbed his dog, so we're good. Um, but what I wanted to talk to you guys about today was a common question that I've been getting lately is, how do you get albino turtles and tortoises? Uh, how do they come about? Um, basically, I wanna talk a little bit today about simple recessive genetics in turtles and tortoises. I'm no biologist, I'm not an expert, but I am going to share with you guys my simple knowledge of genetics. And basically, we're gonna use a good old fashioned Punnett square. If you guys use Punnett squares in high school in your biology class or learned about them, definitely let me know in the comments because I never thought I would use it in my whole life. But that is what we're gonna to use today to explain to you how the genetics work. So we're gonna go over a couple scenarios. Um, I've got my trusty dusty notepad here. My chair, I mean, just this gorgeous throne. Um, and Sophie's out here keeping me company. Oh, and by the way, guys, I don't know if I told you guys or not, but uh, this is Leroy's little, it looks it looks kind of crappy, not gonna lie, but this is Leroy's little outdoor area. Hey, bud, come here. Charge one your haircut. Oh, you got a haircut, huh? You're just such a good boy, huh? You're a little cutie. Just you are, you're crazy. Anywho, that's so we can leave him outside and let him get some of his energy out because he's just got a lot of energy. Um, I've got this set up, letting the chickens eat a little bit of grass because if I let them roam free, this was about, this whole section of my garden, that little, whatever, 12 by two, whatever square, two feet, 12 inches by, one foot by two feet, whatever, you know, guys. They, they destroyed that in a matter of probably 30 seconds. So I don't like them getting out. Um, but anyway, we're gonna jump right into this. Um, describing to you guys a couple situations. First things first, some common terms you're gonna hear are visual albino and heterozygous albino or a normal looking tortoise that carries the albino gene. Um, for example, all of the albino sulcatas I have, they all are visual albinos that obviously carry the albino gene. What we have over there, that normal sulcata, he is a normal sulcata, carries no albinism at all, is not recessive, um, heterozygous or anything, doesn't carry the gene. Um, and then what we have is for the water turtles, I'll show you real quick. We have visual albino red-eared sliders. And then we have heterozygous, which you can't really see it there, but there's one. Sorry, Leroy's barking. Um you can't you can't even see it, it's down there. Anywho, yeah, there it is. Okay, so that is a regular red-eared slider. It looks exactly like a regular insider, but the difference is, is it is what's called a 100% het or heterozygous. It carries the albino gene. And so when you get a heterozygous animal like this one bred with an albino, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what you get there. 
I'm gonna to talk to you about what happens whenever you take an albino and breed it to a, an animal that doesn't carry the gene. And then we're gonna obviously talk about a couple other scenarios, but I'm gonna use the Punnett squares to show you guys that. But we're gonna jump right into it. Um, I'm gonna draw out a couple scenarios. Hopefully I can do this in a clear manner that makes sense to you guys. Um, Leroy is just being a turd. Hey, are you being a bad dog? Yeah, you are, huh? You're a bad dog, huh? And that's why we have to put him outside sometimes. But Sophie instigates it. But let's go ahead and take a seat and I'll show you guys what we got going on. Alrighty, so I've got you guys set up in a way that I think is gonna work best. This is called a, forget that. Punnett square. What this represents is we're gonna use the letter A for albinism, the big A. That means normal tortoise or turtle, doesn't carry the albino gene. Big A, little a, little a being the recessive albino gene, that's gonna be considered a het, or carries the gene, heter heterozygous, but it looks normal because a normal tortoise is the dominant gene. It's not the recessive. Next, what we have is little a, little a. That would be an albino animal that looks albino. So I'm gonna show you a couple scenarios here. Keep those in mind. A couple scenarios about what you get. First things first, we're gonna draw our square again. Call the Punnett square. You got little a, little a, little a, little a. So albino by albino, albino breeds an albino. You get a, 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 a. That means all albinos, right? Easy enough, right? What happens if an albino breeds a normal tortoise that is not het for albino. Just 100% normal slicata that doesn't carry an albino gene. Oop. Big A, big A. We get A, A, big A, little A, big A, little A, big A, little A. So we get 100% all the babies, all 100% of the babies, this was 100 babies, all 100 babies would carry the albino gene. See this little A? That is the albino gene, but they are not visual animals. So this would be like my red-eared sliders in the pond. Those females that look normal, they actually carry the albino gene. So now we've got 100% het babies. They for sure carry the gene, 100% chance. Next, what I'm gonna show you is what happens if we breed 100% het animal, such as the red-eared sliders that I have, right? So I've got male albino red-eared sliders, little a, little a, and I have het albino red-eared sliders. So they're normal looking animal that looks like a het, or that, that carries the albino gene, so it's a het, heterozygous, carrying the recessive gene of albinism. So we do our Punnett square, big A, little a, big A, little a, and then we do little a to little a, and then little a to little a. So what do we get here? If you remember guys, same as the parents. So we're gonna get 50% of the babies are gonna be het, and 50% are gonna be visual albino. So that is gonna be a heterozygous animal to an albino. So when my red-eared sliders breed in the pond, 50% of the babies are gonna be hets, just like the moms, and 50% are gonna be visual albinos like the dads, they're gonna be yellow albinos. What's the next scenario we've got? Heterozygous animal to a heterozygous animal. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated to understand. But the one thing to always remember in the first example was if we breed a normal animal to an albino animal, we're always gonna get normal looking animals that carry the gene. 
So what happens if we breed a heterozygous to a heterozygous, All right? I don't know if you guys can see that tortoise in the background. He's climbing the wall, eating the, the vine there. That's fun. Um, so <laughs> he just kind of fell. Um, so heterozygous to heterozygous, right? So I mean, they both look normal, but they carry the albino gene. We're gonna get a normal tortoise that does not carry the gene at all. We're gonna get het tortoise, big A, little a. And we're gonna do AA, big A, little a, and then small a, small a. So we're gonna get 25% normal. Sorry, my handwriting's trash. We're gonna get 25% albino. And then we're gonna get 50% het. So again, 25% normal will not have the albino gene. 25% will be albinos. Again, this is heterozygous, heterozygous. And 50% of the babies will be hets. We good? Now the big question is, a head animal looks exactly like a normal. A head animal carrying the albino gene looks normal, same as a normal. There's no way to decipher whether an animal is carrying is a heterozygous to carry the gene unless you know the genetics. In the example of, oh, there's our uh, grocery list. Unless you are breeding, obviously all albinos, they're gonna be that way. Unless you're breeding 100% normal to 100% albino, then you know for a fact that they're all gonna be carrying the gene. So what does this mean? So you get 10 babies. No, we're gonna use a, um, a better number, 20 babies. My chickens are getting out. Freaking turds. Oh, sorry about that. Normal babies. So that means that four of them will be normal. Four will be albinos. Oh, my math is bad, guys. Five. And 10 will be hets, 100% hets. Meaning they're gonna carry the gene, they're carrying the gene, they're hets. So you hear this term, 100% het or 66% het. I don't want them to eat my garden, so I'm keeping an eye on the chickens behind me. What does this mean? So we know we had five babies that were albino, right? Out of that group. Now we know we've got 15 babies left out of the 20. So all 15 of these look the exact same, but we know that 50% or 10 of these babies actually carry the albino gene. So 10 and five, but there's no way to tell what they are. So this is what they call a two thirds ratio, or there's a 66% chance that a normal baby from this pairing, there's a 66% chance that that a normal looking baby is gonna be carrying the header, the albino gene, is gonna turn out like this and be able to produce albinos. So I know this is kind of confusing. I know this is a lot of stuff, but I wanna show you guys, right? We're gonna look at the animals. It's probably boring for a lot of you guys. I know somebody asked the question to me recently, so I just wanna make sure I can educate you guys a little bit um, so you guys know what's going on. Let's take a look at the animals. We have, example, albino plus albino, 100% albinos. They're all gonna be golden babies. We have albino plus a normal tortoise. This tortoise for sure does not carry the albino gene, I know that. These would produce 100% heterozygous babies, meaning all the babies are gonna look normal, but within their, their gene sequence, they're gonna be carrying the albino gene. Next option we have is the red-eared sliders. We have our um, albino male to breed these females. They look 100, you can't even see them hardly, sorry. They look 100% like a normal red-eared slider, but I know that they're carrying the albino gene. So again, when this animal breeds that animal, 50% of the babies are gonna be albinos, looking just like the dad, and 50% are gonna look like a normal turtle, but they're for sure gonna be carrying the albino gene. I hope this wasn't too boring for you guys. Um, I just know that this is something that I didn't fully understand until I started learning more about reptile genetics and turtle and tortoise, simple recessor genes. It gets way more complex than this. 
but these are simple recessive turtle and tortoise genes and these numbers saying like oh 25 percent it's that's what the possibility is however you could hit the jackpot and get 50 percent albinos where you should have only gotten 25 percent albinos it's just one of those things it's the way the genetics work you never know what you're gonna get but it's a percent chance now real quick for me if you guys learned something hit the like button and definitely subscribe because if you guys want to see the outcomes of these scenarios that we talked about stick around because hopefully crossing our fingers either the water turtles or these albino sulcatas will be producing babies um, by the end of 2021 that's the goal so i'm gonna go ahead and uh i hope you guys understood this I don't know how to make it any more clear. I could go over it one more time. Maybe watch the video a couple times and you might you might get it a little more. If you got questions or scenarios, put them in the comments below. I'll make sure to respond. But uh, this guy snuck out. Friggin' chickens. It flew, it flew out, which is weird because uh, I've done this before and they didn't fly out. But I'll put him away in a second. But see how he's digging up the dirt? This is what he does in my garden. That's why they kill the garden so fast. But anywho, guys, I'm going to go ahead and put a wrap on this video. This was a really simple video to show you guys the simple genetics of the albino gene. Again, if you breed an albino animal, it, so it gets even worse. One more example before we close the video. Because I had someone ask me. Real quick. If you didn't understand something, go back press rewind and go back and see it. This is the last scenario. What if we do a het animal to a normal animal, right? Normal and nor and basically a normal looking animal that carries the albino gene. We're gonna get normal, normal, and we're gonna get het, het. All these babies are gonna look normal, but 50% of them are gonna be carrying the albino gene but they're all gonna look like a normal animal, a brown normal animal, and there is no way for you to tell if it is a pet or a normal tortoise. There's no way to know. It's a 50% chance. The only way you could know is breeding it back to an albino animal and getting it to, to, uh, getting it to prove out, but that's it. Guys, I'm Hayden with State 48 Turtle and Tortoise. I hope you learned something. I hope you liked the video. I know it was super simple, but please do me a favor. Click the subscribe button. We're growing fast. 200 subscribers, basically almost at a million. Um, so click it, share this video, um, show me some love and some support. Click the like button. So that way YouTube continues to suggest my content. But again, Hayden, State 48, Turtle and Tortoise. Check me out on Instagram. We've got an Instagram going where we post pictures. Um, but we post videos every Friday and the goal is to start posting every Tuesday, which is when this video is going to drop. So appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. And I got to catch some chickens. Peace.